How important are street smarts in legitimate business? Well, you know, I, I think street smarts, you, you learn how to read people. And I, I think that could possibly be the biggest asset that you have. Because you are on your guard a lot with people on the street, you kind of you, you kind of focus more on personality and you kind of look, you know, a little bit deeper into someone. And, you know, you, you've, you've met everybody. You know, when you're as active as I was, I've seen every trick in the book, you know, and I know every kind of play. And if I'm paying attention, it's pretty hard to get something over on me if I'm paying attention. Now, there's times, you know, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not as, uh, I don't have to be as much today, but, but back in the day, you know, I was very, uh, you know, aware of who I was talking to, what their motivation was, what their personality was. And so that's really an asset when you're reading people. It's an asset in negotiation, you know, in the real world, in, in business, um, you know, having knowledge of the situation, because when you went into a sit down and you were negotiating something, you had to know who you were dealing with. You had to know the situation. You had to have a plan in mind. You had to have an exit strategy in mind. You had to know how to trip somebody up if they said the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And you had to become good at this if you wanted to win arguments and then if you wanted to, you know, uh, come out on top. And I had to sit down so often over the gas business because everybody wanted to get involved. Everybody wanted a piece of it. And my biggest job was keeping people out of it because on the street, the more people involved, the less money you're going to make and the more chance of it blowing up, especially if it's an illegal enterprise. So you want to keep it quiet. You want to keep people out of it. You want to keep them away. But, you know, the money was so uh, sort of significant that everybody wanted to get involved. All five families were always interested in it. And, you know, it, it was a it was a, a job keeping them at arm's length. Got it. And and the follow up to that, um, based on what you just said, with the sit downs and keeping people out of it. One of your car dealerships, I, I heard the story with one of your guys and he had an issue with a, a customer and turned out to be a relative of a maid guy and you had to go to have a sit down with that maid guy and make sure things were, you know, strained out for everybody. So how, like, what happened there? How did that transpire? Well, yeah, basically one of my car salesmen got into an argument with the brother-in-law of a maid guy over a car that the brother-in-law claimed we sold him a lemon. And um, my guy took offense to that. And they had a big argument in the, uh, in the you know, parking lot of the, of the dealership. And the brother-in-law mentioned his brother-in-law. My brother-in-law, Mario, is a made guy. And, you know, he's not going to stand for this. And you shouldn't be treating me like this. And my guy said, well, F your brother-in-law. I don't care who he is. We didn't sell you a lemon. Get out of here. And so those words, you know, crossed one another. And Mario heard about it and sent for me and wanted to hurt. I mean, this is how crazy this life could be, you know, with this, you know, sometimes respect is taken to the nth degree. And uh, we had a big sit down over this because he wanted to hurt um, my dealer, uh, you know, my salesman rather, who was a good friend of mine. He was one of my guys, great salesman, by the way. And uh, I had a three hour sit down over this where he threatened to put my guy in a hospital. And I said, well, I'm gonna put your guy in a hospital. I mean, if you're gonna hurt my guy, I'm gonna hurt yours. That's how it's gonna go. So. What are we accomplishing? Anyway, it took three hours for me to straighten it out. And the only way I was able to do it so it didn't go any further was I said, look, Mario, I understand you, you think you lost face with your, your brother-in-law. I said, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you out here. I'm going to give your brother-in-law another car. Give me the car back. I'll exchange it. I'll give him another car. You win the argument. Okay? You're satisfied with that? And tell your brother-in-law that you won. You're satisfied. He's got a new car. He sees you. You're a hero. You know, I don't know if I use those words, but basically that was the end result. And, um, you know, so that's what I did, you know, in order to settle things down and not make this go further and further and further to where maybe somebody would have gotten hurt. You know, who knows? In that life, you don't know sometimes. So, again, you know, plan B, you know, if you see if you see in a negotiation or an argument that, um, you know, there's a way to end it quickly without getting hurt too bad, then do it, you know, cut your losses and do it. In that life, it was a smart thing to do. And maybe in business, it's a smart thing to do. Sometimes you cut your losses. So you know what? I don't want this to go any further. It's not going to work out. I don't want to sit with it for the next couple of months. I don't want to deal with it. Um, it's not going anywhere anyway. So let me cut my losses and, and get out of it. And that's what I did. Yeah. And we get that all the time 
right now, uh, the, I don't know how the real estate market is in California, but over here, uh, it's a seller's market. We don't have enough supply and people are overbidding on a property. And some of the new stuff that builders and developers are building over here, they're cutting, uh, you know, guys like me out or they're cutting our commissions. But we know our, our clients want that or need that. So rather than for some reason, I, I've heard some realtors deterring their clients, we put them in there. It's the right thing to do. We take a cut on our commissions, but we move on. We don't want to deal with the headaches. We don't want to continue and not be able to obviously help our clients. So I, I completely agree with that strategy. And um, how did and you, you say, you know, yeah, just saying, you know, it's the same thing here. The real estate market is crazy. It's a seller's market. There's not a lot of inventory around. People are overpaying for, for homes that I think they may regret, you know, two, three years from now. But look, sometimes you got to just be flexible and go with the, with the market at that time or either there or sit there, you know, not earn anything and, and struggle through it. So, you know, flexibility sometimes is important. That's why I even say when you have a business plan, you know, it's it's at least in the onset, it should be written in stone because this is the plan you want to follow. But, you know, market via market volatility sometimes can make you change your plan in, in a way. And you got to you got to realize that you got to you know draw conclusions from that and, and work the best way it's going to, uh, you know, help you at that moment.